Hello, uh, good evening, uh, Martha. How are you? Hello, hi, Sapo. How are you doing? I hope that you can uh, hear me loud and clear. Uh, I, I regret the, the delay in starting, but I hope you can hear me loud and clear. Can you get me? Yes, I confirm I can hear you. Confirm the okay. same. Thank you, thank you very much. I really, really want to apologize uh, for the delay in time to begin this program uh, due to a lot of things, but I think we have to get moving. Uh, I want to welcome you once again. And uh, before we do it, I want us to have a prayer. Just open it a word of prayer and then we'll proceed. I know many people are going to be online, but let's pray. Father, I want to thank you tonight. We give you glory and honor. We thank you for this opportunity you have given us to hear in this discussion, we commit ourselves to you, that you will be able to bless us and speak to us. Thank you, Lord, for our host, Engineer Martha. Thank you for her time and this opportunity. We ask that, Lord, as we move forward, you'll minister to us greatly. This we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Thank you very, very much. Uh, allow me, uh, before I welcome you to discuss what we have to discuss, Allow me to take some time to introduce yourself to our guest. Allow me to say a few words about you. Uh, this evening, we are privileged to have uh, Engineer Martha Charuto on this program. We're calling the Record Bike Moment. We're following this program, this is our fourth episode of this program. And we believe that this program is meant to be a blessing to many people uh, across whatever sector you're involved in. Now, Martha Cheruto, engineer, is the Deputy Chief Executive Officer at Kenya Private Sector Alliance. Uh, she's a lady of many colors, allow me to say, looking at the qualifications, uh, which I will ask that you'll talk at some point, but we are privileged to have you, Martha. I don't have a lot of time uh, to talk about the issues I would have wanted to because of time. And so I quickly just want to allow you to be able to influence society today. Uh, this platform is about a program to reach out to people, to make them to be men and women of principle. That means whatever you're doing, whether you are in business, whether you are doing ministry, whatever it is you engage in, this platform enables you to be able to have or acquire principles of people who have done it before and inspire whoever it is that is going to join us in this program. So we are live on this uh, Zoom platform, but again, we are streaming it live also on a platform I call the scripture prescription. So we are both live on these two programs. So Martha, welcome so much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for waiting. You're here even before me. So I really want to appreciate you so very much. I don't take anything for granted. So allow me to just to say a few words before we delve into the matter and I begin to ask you a few questions I have, uh, but I allow you to say hello to us uh, so that then we can quickly move and do what we are supposed to do. Karibu sana. Wow, oh, thank you so much, uh, Pastor. So, Sakwa, this is, I really appreciate that you took your time also to invite me to come to this forum. I have been following you and I still follow you uh, on your scriptures and also the preaching that you do. And indeed, they have been a blessing. I'm also blessed that I also worked with you at some point in my life and uh, joining the team here and Adrian online just to discuss the journey and learn from each other and also inspire each other to grow is uh, something that I truly appreciate. And I look forward to an engaging session and greetings to everyone all. I hope you had a lovely day. Let's engage this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Martha. I really, once again, welcome, and I'm so happy to have you tonight. Now, I'll quickly go through uh, one of the questions that I would like to ask you. I know I have taken time to introduce you, and I won't ask you about you, but I would like to ask you in general, what has been your journey uh, to the position you hold now at Kepsa? What has been your journey? in a few words. Well, it's been an interesting journey, I can tell you, because all the way from, I can mention, I guess it from primary to secondary school, then to campus taking the engineering course, and then having to study or do part of my attachment outside the country. 
and coming back to Kenya to study again, to continue studying and then work. So it's been interesting, but also very inspiring because I have worked in various organizations and in each organization, I notice when I look back, just as Steve Jobs said, I can add the dots from behind. Because I started uh, looking at the industry and that was purely manufacturers, looking at them and how they're consuming their energy and analyzing initially the context of why energy efficiency has not been absorbed as much as is required within industry. Then from there, I went into now cutting out the energy audits themselves. So with a very good team and being led by seasoned energy auditors, I managed again to interact with industry at that time. So I could tell energy audits for hospitals, for hotels, for the manufacturing industries, for service, the entire, just the entire industry, the private sector. From that, because I started studying about the policies, then I got into a place where I'll now look at the policy environment asking ourselves what policies exist in this country that would enable a business do, like to have a conducive business environment. So I would look at energy policy, the regulations, and just supported development of various regulations within this country. So that was now the policy level and dealing with energy matters. And that was in the private sector. And through that, one other thing that I realized is uh, I got an opportunity to become a chair. So I chaired two task forces in this country. That is, a, I chaired the climate change policy framework and also the climate change bill. That was one when we were developing it and also co-chaired the green economy strategy and implementation plan. So I realized my line is purely on energy and matter sustainability. And remember this had an input when I'd gone to Germany to do some work. So in Germany, I noticed every, almost everywhere you go, wind energy was the common thing. You'd see wind turbines and you realize, oh yeah, okay, in Kenya, we don't have wind as much, wind turbines, but in another country it is there. So having worked in the uh, private sector, I now moved to public sector. I wanted to understand what is it that the public sector is doing to still promote economic growth, because that was my interest. And that is where I am privileged to have worked with ISAQA. So within that organization, I would look at the large power customers and also the SMEs. That this is still the private sector because they constitute a larger, actually their contribution to the revenue to that organization is very high. So that is how I would still engage and make sure that the complaints, uh, they had a place to be heard. So it was purely creating a single contact point for this uh, segment of customers. Now, having been uh, at the, <laughs> in the public sector, so having worked both in private and also public, and I can mention the organization that I'm very proud of those organizations. Within the uh, private sector, I worked with, there's also the Sustainable Energy Initiative. I worked with Lean Energy Solutions. I also worked with the Kenya Association of Manufacturers. That is where I stayed for a long time. And then having come now to Kenya Power because uh, energy is an enabler and Kenya Power is the main distribution organization in this country, the main utility. So I was, uh, I managed to work with them. So in between that process is where I noticed I still have an interest because I have a vision. I really want to influence policies and policies towards energy, policies on matters, climate change and sustainability, and policies and the leg, uh, regulatory framework towards private sector development. So when an opportunity came uh, to take up, I consulted very many people and that is where the importance of coaches come in, mentors come in, support system, my family was there. And we all looked at all possibilities and asked, is it still in my career growth? Is it still in my path that I want to be? And the answer was yes. And that is when I took up the opportunity at uh, the Kenya Private Sector Alliance. And now it was a, a huge, I feel a huge milestone for me because coming in to deputize the CEO is a great opportunity. I still engage with government so now I'm back to private sector, still influencing policies, which is still my career path. We're engaging again with the organizations I've worked with before. And now on a bigger scale, not only from energy perspective as an enabler, but all other enablers and all other sectors. So if we look at the entire chain of private sector and look at the policies and now influence to government. So through the ministries, through the National Assembly, you look at the Senate, you're looking at the, govern the, the county governments, you look at also the judiciary level and all the way to the, uh, to the presidential level and then beyond that we're just not only at local, just Kenyan uh, context. We are now looking at 
um, the regional level at the East African community level at the EAC and continental level and globally. So that has been my journey. And uh, I have learned so much. I have been mentored by people. So there's, it's just an interesting way. And maybe to mention here the journey that has been there is I learned something uh, when I was in, uh, in all this. Remember my training is an engineer. And engineering, we are taught to we design, we analyze, and we prevent, uh, we present solutions. So we are always taught to be a solution uh, provider, and you and you ensure that you enable, you get a problem, and you provide a solution. So I moved from an operational perspective, and then out to the strategic level. So there has been some growth there, and all this has been supported. I can tell you for sure. I've had different coaches in my life. I've had mentors, and then I also went back to school. I have undertaken so many trainings on energy, on climate change, on sustainability. I've taken on sustainable trade. I have done, uh, now my master's is in management and leadership. Currently I'm doing my PhD in management and leadership. So you can see I'm balancing both. My professional courses are on energy, sustainability and matters trade. And then academic now is coming in and see, as, I am getting into leadership level, to the executive level. What skills do I need? I go back to school to gain those skills. So those are the things that, uh, that has been my journey, yes. And I tell you, God has been gracious to me and he has been faithful. Thank you. Wow, I'm really following up and just get excited by what you're telling us. Thank you very, very much. Let me ask you a question, Martha, and thank you for that journey. Let me ask you, so why did you choose engineering? specifically mechanical engineering what what were your you know what were the objectives really what why 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 engineering wow um engineering has uh by the time i was settling for engineering there had been some very many deliberations in my mind um in my family we have an engineer at home one of my brothers is a trained electrical engineer and then a cousin of mine is a mechanical engineer so at least that influenced my life in matters engineering. But my decision came in that in high school, I had three careers that I was looking at because I, would, I loved sciences and physics was one of my best subjects and we had a very good teacher. So I would study physics, chemistry was on point, uh, mathematics and all the others was part of uh, the subjects that I enjoyed. But then I wanted to be a doctor I wanted to be a pilot. Actually, pilot was being the first one. I really wanted to be a pilot because I love planes and I loved flying. So being a pilot, the next thing I thought through is I wanted to be a doctor. Why? In case I'm flying and there's a passenger uh, in the plane who's unwell, so as a doctor, I would get and help that uh, passenger. The third one was not to be an engineer. That in case anything happens uh, up there, I will look into... Uh, being an engineer, then I can provide a solution and at the same time, uh, maybe handle it before getting back to land. So coming to choose courses uh, in the final year, I realized, yes, my piloting still exists, but being a doctor, I am scared of blood. I would, I have, a, I call it like a very soft heart. I would feel I'm scared and I'm not ready to go into that. And I would really admire doctors and they said, this is indeed a calling. Yes, I loved biology, but I felt I could not proceed with my medicine uh, discussion or career. So I had piloting and uh, engineering. So because piloting in Kenya um, is not done in the universities at that time, so I went into mechanical engineering and I really wanted mechanical because it could still lead me to aeronautical engineering. So I settled on mechanical. And my first choice was JK Ewart. And indeed, I thank God that I got my first choice as mechanical, uh, to be a mechanical engineer and at JK Watt, that is what I was called for. And now after doing my, getting into mechanical engineering in between uh, the university, I got a chance to get out of the country and I went to Germany. And then I settled on energy because energy became the inking. I had a very good lecturer who would take us through energy and uh, thermodynamics and would feel this is what I really want to proceed on in my life. So I came in, I did a project on energy and that's how I sell to real energy until today. And I can tell you for sure, even if I was to be given a chance to go back, I would still go back to do, a me to mechanic to do mechanical engineering because one, it's very volatile, uh, uh, versatile, sorry. 
you can get into any field of engineering, you have so much to learn, then you can break into the fields that you can specialize in are very many. And climate change came in because energy, uh, you discuss matters to do with geothermal generation, and slowly you get into looking at transmission distribution, then our consumption around it. You're studying how to efficiently use energy in industry. So that comes into matters to do with thermodynamics. And then being now engineering, engineering because I love thinking. One of the things I love in my life is just analyzing and thinking through problems and trying to think solutions, uh, try to be innovative as possible. And that is what engineers are taught. You're taught to be identify problems you're taught to provide a solution. So you really analyze that problem and come up, you actually analyze it to the root cause. So you do the why, why, five whys around it, and then you come up with a solution. And even that solution that you're thinking around, you actually try and uh, it's like you're doing, a, you're testing each uh, proposal that you have. So you strain it, you test it to the maximum, to the maximum tension, what does it mean? And then, at the end, you now say this is the recommendation. And when someone implements that recommendation, it indeed uh, becomes a solution to the original problem. And that has been my uh, life until now. When you're looking at uh, policies, it's the same way. From engineering thinking, the problem is an example, we cannot uh, do business very well in this country or it takes too long. So, when, so you start asking the question, why? Why does it take too long? Because one, two, three has not been done. Why is that? What is the problem? How can it be solved? When can it be solved? So by the time you're finishing, you are actually presenting a recommendation to the stakeholders that for this problem, this is the recommended solution and this is the impact and this is what it will bring uh, to the table once that is implemented. And these are the tools that you require or the resources you require to deliver uh, on the recommendation given. So you can see engineering still is being applied even in my life right now. Yes, Sakwa. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you, Martha. <laughs> I'm, I mean, uh, I'm just getting impressed by what you're telling us now. This platform has a lot of young uh, ladies that, uh, that are following up and I've done this special invitation for them. Uh, would you just let me know uh, what you would say to inspire them, probably to take a path like the one you have taken. There are many young people out here who don't think, for instance, that uh, a lady can go out there and do mechanical engineering, for instance, and be successful as you are. What would you tell them? Speaking right into their hearts to, to just have a feel of what you're going through and what you have taken to become who you are. That's a good one. Um, to all young people out there, and especially the ladies, I think what pushes me is my goal. So the first thing to identify is what is your vision? And I always put across to people that you need a vision board. And the vision board is in different sectors, not only just career, there's financial, uh, what are you looking at in your finances, your relationship, your spiritual life, your career path, your education, your family goals. So you have a vision board. And then on this vision board, you always have like people, you have role models. So the role models also inspire you and you read about them, what they did, the challenges they went through. The other thing that I've also known is be open to learning and reading because the world is changing. Right now, the world has moved into the digital space. So how are we fitting ourselves into the digital space? So we all have to be as dynamic as possible with everything that we do and then take risks. Sometimes we are very comfortable in our comfort zone and feel that because I'm getting one, two, three, then I am comfortable. But then there's something uh, I was reading, I think even today, and someone said, Initially, this person say would make $10,000 in a month. And he would feel that is, as we say in Kiswahili, a mefika. And his company or his uh, crowd of people or his associates were actually looking towards that. That, yeah, ukifika $10,000 umefika. But the person went and engaged and found out that other people are actually making $100,000 a month. So what did this person do? He realized, oh, actually, 10,000 is nothing. It's only 10% of what these other people are making. So it means you can always be better. So always have that, that is, you can always be better every single time. 
So you can always challenge yourself, you can push yourself and always just pull even when you require and by all means that just make something happen. Now, uh, is it easy? The answer is no. There are challenges on the way. Don't uh, expect that things will happen overnight, for sure it can't. But be always encouraged by your vision and your goal. How do you want to get there? So answer the five wives, the five dub, the four Ws and one husband, the four the wives and one husband. That is what do you want to be? Why do you want to be that? Who do you want to be? So there's also who, who exactly, how can you define yourself? Then how do you get there? That is now the house. You will require mentors, that is for sure. You will require to invest, be prepared to invest. So you have to look for resources to invest because going back to school or being attached somewhere, you'll have to invest. And then by when? So in your vision board, then you have your terms or short-term plans, the long-term, the medium-term, and answering all those questions. And then there's something that I also learned from Oprah Winfrey. She said, who am I? From a Christian perspective, who are you? So who is Martha in this case? So I define that by what God really wanted me to be. And remember, God made all of us different. We are all, we could be all ladies, but then there's a unique part, there's a unique, there's uniqueness around you or about you. And that unique thing is what is your strength. Because if indeed God wanted us to be the same, he would have made us to be the same. It would be very easy. And it will be a, a very boring act. But he made us with a unique strength so that we can bring and spice up this world that is put us in, the purpose that we are here. He wants to spice it up. That there's a strength Martha has, there's a strength Johnston has, and I'm also seeing this, say Monica or Anne or someone has some different strength. So we are supposed to support each other in that path. Then the other thing that I've noticed is don't limit your boundaries. Don't, don't say because I am in Nairobi, I will only work in Nairobi or I will only work in, well, like now some of my hometown is, a, I come from a Sengishu County. So I cannot limit myself to a Sengishu County. I will open up and say Kenya is, we are all Kenyan. So we will open up and work in Kenya. But now we are living in a global village. So working online, there are people who could be online even from other continents, meaning with working online, you can work anywhere. So any opportunity that comes along your way, remember the opportunities are number one scarce, but then the opportunity that is on your way, what are you doing with it? Are you taking it? Or are you the shy person who will say, ah, you're mimi siwezi, you're ni anani, I cannot do this. No, we were told, now we said also speak to the women, one thing that we also do as women, when an opportunity comes, we look at and say, I have 80% of the quality qualifications, E20 Nitacha Kando. If you find an opportunity and you feel you have you have what it takes, don't, don't have to, check, uh, to tick all the boxes. You apply, go for it. You've been told to speak. By the way, take those opportunities, speak. You don't have to be perfect. No one is perfect, by the way, but we learn every day. So the, the more you practice, the better you become every single day. Take those opportunities that you're given. Richard Branson told us the same thing, Sapwa, and uh, viewers online. He said, when you're told to do something, say yes, and then go and learn. And you make sure you deliver on it. So be as open as possible. Will you be criticized by anyone? Yes, critics are there. Will you feel down? Yes, those moments are there. Will you cry? Yes, you will cry. But at the end, when you look back, you will be smiling that you never gave up. Because remember giving up or quitting is the first way to tell you your answer is you've already lost. And that's the same way you're told. Uh, if you look at anyone who's gone for or a job comes up, until you apply for it is when you will begin, you have said you have started the process. But if you don't apply, then you've already closed out on that opportunity. So anything tried, fail, yes. Regret sometimes and feel, oh no, I should have. It is okay. You regret and feel okay. But that regret should end there. Just look back and say, I would have done one, two, three. Because they say you never lose 
you, all you do is you become a better person and you get experience every single time. So try that. You will be challenged. It is okay. But say your voice. God is always there. God gave us those unique abilities. And God, I always say that uh, God um, has, a, he has a purpose for all of us. And that is why he says, you will run your race. So you, he's already put you in a certain lane. And he knows this lane, this is how you're going. These are the corners you will find. So he already knows your path. So whether you some feel discouraged sometimes, but yes, just know that God already knows your path and support system. That is what I believe in, support system. Your friends, your family, your church members, your pastors around you, the, uh, at work or at home, you need a support system. People you can always fall back on. That person that you can call in today and say, I am not okay. Can I see you? I just want to cry. Allow me to scream, go scream. But then after screaming, you now come back and say, by the way, okay, now that is done. Next. And you move on. Because when you wake up, there's always a dawn in the morning. When you pass through a tunnel, there's always light on that side. When you use all the trains or something, or when you're going through at night, we always drive knowing we are going home. So when we are like, now you start by telling me, say there's traffic. But we'll be stuck in traffic, knowing it will open up at a certain time. And at the end, my ultimate goal is that I'm going home. So if we can believe on that, that I can stay in traffic for three hours, but the bottom line you're going, you will be at home. So there it will rain and traffic. There are places you will find that no lights maybe, or you will find there's road construction. So there are diversions. Uh, you will find there's a, say a tunnel somewhere and you have to go through it. Or you find there's a dusty road. There's a place there's stomach, but bottom line, your mind is set, you are going to your home. So if you can do that every day, then it means you can do that for your life. Roman I want to just bring in three things that uh, I learned and uh, the people I look up to is, um, there's this oh, lady yeah, called- oh, uh, yeah, oh, Yes, I'm just excited, go on. <laughs> ah, okay, thank you. <laughs> so there's the uh, part of the people I look up to is one of the ladies who was appointed as a director general to the WHO. She's called Dr. Ngozi. And that and Ngozi gave us three things that until today, it made me, in everything I do, I think, wait, where am I? And where do I want to go? The first thing she said, raise your standards. So send your standards, you raise them every single day. Elevate your level on a daily basis. Just raise your standards. Today you are here. Tomorrow you'll be here. You're on this level, second stairs, it's the same way. If you're going to an 11th floor building, you will have to climb the stairs or go by the elevator. So you will have to raise your standards on a daily basis. Number two, raise your sight. Don't be short-sighted. Think the bigger picture. What is, where are you seeing? Are you seeing yourself at the global level or are you seeing yourself at this small space that you have? So are you confining yourself by your own choice? So you raise your sight, think big. That's what Ben Carson said when you were reading uh, in primary, think as big as you can. Today, I can be wild and say, I'm, I'm going to be the president of Kenya. It is allowed. No one has uh, limited your options. So if that is what you want, then the answer is how are you going to do about it? And by when? And who do you need also to support you? So all those are the reasons why do you want to be the president? So don't limit yourself, especially as women, we always limit ourselves and say, this is what I, I want to, this is what I have been confined to. This is what I was told. This is my area only. This is only, for, no, that is what they said. But what are you saying to yourself? And finally, is raise your stage. Raise your stage. Where are you acting? So which stage are you acting on? Are you acting on, on the global stage? Or are you acting on the home stage only? So it is raise your stage. And she said, all these three things should make us remember, you want to go global. We have various people that we know where they came from. Professor Angare Madai is a Kenyan like you and me. She's a lady like you and I. What did she do? 
she went global, a laureate, my Nobel laureate, a whole professor. There are very many people we can use as examples who've grown to the world. Eliud Kipchoge said, no human is limited. He had his goal, marathon. I'm going to do it under two hours. By when? He knew it. He knew what he did. He did, he put on his uh, all practice. His mind was there. And indeed he delivered because he knew what he was going for. Were there distractions on the road? Yes. Were there sacrifices he had to make? Yes. But he was never distracted. He knew this is where I'm going. And look at the fruits now. He is an ambassador of various brands. He speaks peace. He, takes, he tells us how to really go to that stage. He's gone global. He raised his standards. He raised his stage. He was now playing at the global level. How about you and I? What is stopping us? Our own limitations sometimes. But this, you can always start from somewhere. Don't, don't feel you have lost, no. That is why God wakes you up every morning because he knows there's still something he wants you to do. So go for it. So every morning you wake up, you tell God, God, this is my new day to start a new chapter in my life. I will start today. And it's never too late. <laughs> never too late. Yeah, those are the things that I would want to really encourage and, uh, and give people. And finally, I want to tell people also, as they, once you graduate and you get into a job, don't look at one line only. Don't specialize uh, and say, this is the only thing I will do. No. If you're given other opportunities, take them, as I said earlier. And then as you rise uh, in terms of uh, profession and even career and that job, what I learned is you also become a generalist. So get to us, learn as much current affairs, read, news, sorry, read newspapers, uh, read something about the world, where the world is going, read politics, um, read the economies of different countries, so that you also open up your mind and engage as much as possible and network, network, network as much as you can. That, that is how you will learn and you become a generalist. Yes, and then you will have to, um, Always just do your best. I always say be the best version of yourself every day and compete against yourself. Don't compare. You are unique. You are the only one. You are the best copy. There's no photocopy of you. Don't copy paste someone. Be you and do you. Yes, Sakwa. Thank you. You know, I'm just about to say amen. <laughs> I've, I've, I've picked two things that uh, changed my life completely. One, Raise your stage, raise your stage, exciting. Uh, you talked about be the best version of yourself, exciting, really, really. And thank you so, so much. Now let me, and you know, and you brought in just what I wanted to ask in my, in my next question. Tell us mm -hmm. about your spirituality, does it even matter? Sorry about? I say, tell us about your spirituality, does it even matter? Yeah. Hey, yes, it does. <laughs> let me tell you for sure. <laughs> You know, one uh, beautiful thing about we as human beings is uh, we always believe in a spiritual being. We are all we always are spiritual beings. We always know or believe that there is someone higher than ourselves. That is one thing that I have known. Everyone, majority, let me use the one majority, always know that there is a higher being than ourselves. And personally, that works for me. My spirituality, uh, I think it comes first. I believe that God has a purpose for everyone. I believe in God. And I'm an Anglican, but that's the church I also go to. And it comes all the way from, let me say, from how I was raised, from my home. We were very clear on that, that always pray. Prayer. Prayer for me has worked in so many ways, uh, Sakwa. And I believe in prayer every single day. And that's the same thing I will say in our family. At least every night we have to make our prayers. So even our children know that, yes, this is how you're going to live by. You have to make our prayers. Before you start your journey, when you end your journey, when there's something coming up, 
uh, when you want to say thank you, because there's a, a higher being that is enabling you to wake up in the morning. Uh, God is waking you up. God is the one who, there's always that inner voice that is in you. Sometimes you consult. So spirituality for me is uh, it's very deep. And always tell everyone it is very personal. So you need to have your own personal relationship with your maker and ask him, what is it? What am I, what are you teaching me in this? When you go through some challenges, there are some moments you actually sit back and say, I miss you easy. Mean me give up. Apa ni hard. You know that moment of thinking, and you will cry. But then you go back and remember, wait, God woke me up in the morning. He knew this is what would happen. So I ask, I, I sit back and say, okay, so what am I learning? If I'm to give up, what am I telling myself? And what are we telling our children and the family? So you'll find that you now wake up and say, no, this is what God wanted me to do. And then there are some situations also when you believe in spirituality is that there are things that happen. And then later on you say, ah, that is why. You've heard of stories of people who say they've woken up in the morning, they delayed uh, somehow, which is not normal for them. And then later during the day, they actually come and appreciate by the way, this, that delay in the morning is what helped me maneuver something or it prevented uh, something else happening to me. So I come from that school of thought that I've come to appreciate uh, sometimes, let things flow. Just let them flow because God is with you. So I would encourage everyone that personal relationship is critical and have people around you who can listen to or who can talk to you. And that's where I come to you and I tell you, you might never know. You know, the way people follow you online, you don't know who's listening to you. But I can assure you, like I told you, there are several sermons you've given in the morning. And I'm thinking, hmm, he's talking to me today. There are moments I'll go to church. And then that is the day our vicar is talking or the lay reader is speaking about something or someone is talking about something. And then you listen to the message, you're like, wait, did you know I'm here? And then it touches you to that bottom part of your heart. Then you come out feeling energized, uh, knowing that, yes, this is, this is me. This is what God has said and he wants me to do. This is what the Bible said and I'm ready. So yes go for it, follow, and please sakwa. You know, you invited me today, but don't stop. Don't stop what you're doing. We might not all of us tell you online, but never stop because you talk to people in their own, um, we, say we all have our own cocoons, but now in that cocoon, since you cannot talk or say everything into anyone or to every single moment, but you just want to hear another voice. And that voice could be you now being used by God to go to touch that person who feels sana. And trust me, during COVID, you'd hear so many stories when you go through uh, discussions, because I now deal with private sector, mental health issues. And you're like, wow, it is tough. But it has been a tough year for everyone. But when you go back to your place and then you hear some words, either from different uh, spiritual leaders, your Bible, your family, you realize you can always go on. So that's my encouragement now to you. Yes, I could be encouraging others, but I'll encourage you, Sakwa. Don't stop it. Mm, don't stop. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Wow, thank you, Martha. I'm just listening and listening and listening. Now, <laughs> I have a young lady I also mentor who has sent a question from the UK. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I would like to ask this question. A lady also who I appreciate and I value so much in my life. A young lady has seen grow now in the, in the UK, who has done many things uh, and we appreciate. This is what she's asking. Okay. How do you identify a mentor? Because different people inspire you differently, career-wise, spiritually. But how do you identify? Would you just, in a few words, encourage this young lady in the UK right now? Okay. Oh, great. It's really nice. Now, that's the advantage of online. You, we, beyond Buddhas. So thank you for the question. Mentors, there are two, uh, there are different ways of personal growth. So there's mentorship and coaching. 
Now in mentorship, what you identify is you look at there are people within your profession or within your vision book that I was talking about, the vision lines that were there. And through those lines, you now ask who could help you grow in that line. Then you identify and reach out to them. And there are various ways. You can reach out to them, you can plan to meet them, you can email them, you can call them if you know them personally, or even do an email or try to engage as much as possible. So the mentor will take you through say the experiences and usually for a mentor, you ask the questions. You So the, as the mentee, you ask the mentor some questions. How do I do this? What do I do? What do I need to do to get there? So that is the mentorship. And majority of the time, as I say, as people who have had experience in the line you want to, to grow in. So if it is an engineer, like now myself, I have a mentor who is an engineer because these are senior people who have been in this profession before and they are moving that line. Then you go now, there's something else called a coach. So a coach always asks you questions. Coaches are supposed to make you like, they enable your thinking and your driving yourself to achieving that goal that you want to achieve. So they help you look at clarity. They ask you, okay, this is what you're planning, but what exactly does that mean? Then you, you start now rethinking of what it's all about. So a coach asks you questions and there are very many uh, professional coaches and you can check them out on uh, the different, uh, organization. So there are certified and there are certified professional coaches who now are trained in different areas that you want to say you want financial, you want life, uh, you want a career, you want uh, education. So there are all those ones. And even maybe if you're in the line of uh, spirituality or so all those uh, vision and that I talked about. Now a coach will take you through that. And every single time there's like an assignment. I have one, I can tell you for sure. And there's an assignment that you have to, to really res respond to. You'll discuss some items and then you realize, hmm, this one I'd not thought about it carefully. So you go back and you try now to, like they help you define and redefine your goals. They help you now think through uh, what you want to achieve, the barriers that are making you not achieve that. And they make you also appreciate something that I noticed that everything is within your control. You remember sometimes we look at others and start saying, oh no, this is not what happened. But then they make you believe in that, that you are the, you're the destiny shaper yourself. So they will help you. So that is now where the mentorship and the coaching comes in and they are very critical people. Those two, they help you grow and they make you also understand the risks because they've taken some risks so they can tell you the pros and cons of some risks or some ideas you have and even how to maneuver around it. So even as a leader right now, I have those people in my life because mentors also, I go and look for a leader who has led before or he's still a leader right now. And now they help me. There are some moments you think through and say, mm -hmm, this one, I'm not sure I'm able to deliver or I am going through this or this is the situation I, I have. What is your advice? And what is your guidance? Then they guide you on how to go through a certain situation and how to come out of it and dealing with the consequences of your decisions and all that. So those are, that is how I would say that uh, it's a way of identifying and also how to engage them and don't reach out to them and make it a two way. Learn, let them also, you can come with ideas also in what they do. So you engage that relationship uh, with your mentor and they can really help your growth because there are also people who can be advocating for you in opportunities. You know, the way we are told, who is there to speak after you when you leave the room? That we identify those people. So that is a Johnston I would say regarding the question on mentorship. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, Martha. Really, <laughs> I'm, I'm just sitting here and, and, and just soaking into what you're speaking into our lives. And I'm sure that the, the young lady has been answered about what you're talking about. Thank you very much. I think that is very, very conclusive, very, very important for us. Allow me to ask, is discipline a factor in personal growth? <laughs> yes. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. If you notice uh -huh. uh, everyone, I think, even when you do, when you check out the motivational, uh, as they call them, the motivational speeches or inspirational speeches, which also listen to or uh, people who inspire others, they come back to their discipline. 
everyone. And I always refer to Eliud Kipchoge also. He, because for me, he, I learn a lot from him. For him to qualify something that has never been done by another person or a human being. And he decided that that is what he wants to do. When you look at his training schedule, he talked of the shoes, what was done, all that thing that was put into shape. For sure, it's about discipline. Same thing with Professor Wangare Mata. It was about discipline. She knew for her to be the thought leader in matters environment, there are things that she had to do. So discipline is critical. You know, if you want to achieve something, if it means waking up at 4 a.m., it calls for discipline for you to wake up at four. Sometimes that blanket is so sweet. You just want the warmth of that bed. But you know, I need to get up at 4 a.m. if I want to catch a train at five, at bus at five, or a flight at 5 a.m. I have to wake up. So if you want to be the bigger or the better version of yourself every day, discipline is critical. At the same time, it is also comes with some sacrifice. So it goes hand in hand. You have to sacrifice some things sometimes, like now at 4 a.m. you have to sacrifice that sleep. Then in the morning, it's very sweet, but you have to sacrifice it. And so your discipline helps you sacrifice it so that you achieve your, out, uh, your outcome. So it is a critical thing for you to enable and get your goals, yes. Wow, thank you. The lady from the UK called Monica says, question well answered and learning a lot. Praise God. Thank I'm you. I'm excited about that. Yes, now, thank of you. course, I am also learning the, the, the mentorship issue, the coaching issue, and I'm sure you're speaking into the lives of many people. I'm sure uh, there are people who might not even have known the difference, but I, I appreciate your so well. And I really, really appreciate it. Allow me to say, ask you a question. Uh, I have had an opportunity to work with you, and I admire your resolve. I really do. Honestly, I do. And I think I've already told you this. I really admire. And and and, and uh, yes, thank you for your words about uh, the what I do uh, in terms of preaching and even this program. I don't take it for granted. But let me ask you, what really drives the engineer? I'm still, I'm still. <laughs> I mean, you're excited about what you do. You're passionate about young people, the women I've seen. I couldn't have time to read your entire profile. Forgive me for that because we got in late, so I didn't have that opportunity. But I recognize all the accolades you have. Allow me to say I really do, and I really appreciate Thank So you. And I, I, I am so inspired. Honestly, I, I, you know, we tried to fix this thing two months ago. We couldn't get hold of you, and I just never gave up. What is it that inspires you? You're smiling. You, you've really achieved a lot, really. So, I mean, I just want to get the gist of that matter. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, sometimes it becomes tough when someone reads out your accolades and you realize, wow. So thank you. I appreciate the recognition. What inspires me or what moves me every day? I leave my mantra is just be happy. That's it. That just drives me every single time. I want to be happy. And that happiness is something that I would want to share with people around me. Spread that cheer. Then you're told, lighting up somebody else, a candle does not go off or does not lose its shine or brightness when it lights up another candle. It actually spreads that uh, brightness to other people. So with that in mind, so it keeps me moving every day. I want to see my family happy, and to see my friends happy, and to have an environment where tomorrow someone else can say the people ahead of us enabled us to be happy, or they created a platform where you can enjoy the fruits. That's why, as you said, rightly put it, I'm always keen on the future generation or the young people, because I also came through that profile. I had someone who held my hand. So can I also go back and hold somebody's hand? And that is what would inspire me to deal with the youth, the girls that now we've reached over 4,000 girls in this country, just supporting them on matters of menstrual health. And even- Wow, wow, you said, say the number again, <laughs> say the number again. Don't just pass with that big number like that. Say it again, please. Over 4,000. Yeah. Miss, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, so over 4,000 
And then during Christmas, you'll find that there's a school or there's a team that would go out and just um, have a cheer with children somewhere. So the people who, you, who feel sometimes, I can't do this, but just going there and dancing with them because I love dancing. So I love music, I love dancing, uh, I love smiling, as you said. And so can I spread that smile to someone? That really keeps me going every day. And then there's also something we say in our family, what are the children learning from us? So our children, when they see us as their parents, what are they learning? Can they see the smile on the faces of their parents every day? Can they see the, the hard work or working smart every day from these people? And then in the country, like now where I am, it is my joy to sit back one day in my life and say, I participated in that. Like now I look back at the documents, the policies, the regulations, the acts that we've spearheaded and they are being implemented and you find the private sector happy about it, then it brings a smile to my face. I'm like, yes, there was an impact. So be having an impact, a positive impact, I think is always my drive every single day when bringing that cheer. And then the need to become better. I've fallen enough times. Is it true? Yes. Do I get what I, I plan to achieve every day? No. Sometimes you might plan to do 10 things, but you don't even do one. And I'm like, it's okay. At least I'm still alive. There's tomorrow. Then you wake up and you try. So there's impact, so positive impact and just wanting to be happy. I just want to be happy. I just want to smile. Yes, that's what I want to do. That's what drives me. Wow, wow, wow. I'm getting you just some yeah, Lucy. is really close to my heart that I also like to mention uh, matters that <laughs> matters that are so close to my heart to discuss. Uh, and, and so I wanted to say that you talked about Christmas reaching out. Oopsie, I lost you. Uh, I lost you. Oh, can you? Yeah, yeah I can, can you hear, hear me you. now. Yes, yes, I can continue. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I was saying that uh, over, I think uh, we were having a small challenge in the net, but it's okay. I wanted to say that over this Christmas, uh, we are we are taking time to also reach out to the uh, people who are not really over Christmas. We want to put a smile on the face of people in the village. And so I'm personally running up a program where we're raising some money to go and give gift hampers in the village over Christmas period. And so I am also I also believe in what you're talking about, touching the lives of people in whatever way that we can. And I, I find this to be very exciting. I'm looking forward to this period. I just want to see that smile on the old people's faces and you know, as 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 they also enjoy Christmas. So I'm I'm resonating with you. Absolutely. I'm really resonating with you 100%. And I appreciate what you're doing. I can say that a thousand times uh, that you're doing a great uh, piece of work. And let me say that I, I I also follow you. I see the activities you do. I can tell you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and, 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 and it gets me excited. And you know, uh, you have said a lot of things, uh, Mark, I can tell you, engineer, you have said many things that uh, I think add value to the lives of people. They are so inspiring. I am personally inspired by what you have said and uh, i'm gonna you know play this recording again just to get uh, the gist of everything that you have said to us it's, 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 it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be on on youtube uh it's going to be uh everywhere uh because we want people to be uh to be blessed by 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 what you have said and so I, I, I can never doubt the, the ability of, of what you have said. These words are so impactful, by the way, so impactful. And uh, so on YouTube, you'll still get this information. It's going to be there for a while. Now, we have a few minutes. Uh, and so uh, no, just, uh, maybe something, like, something I didn't ask you that you feel uh, I didn't give you time to talk about. Just take a few minutes to talk about it. Then I'll still look out for if there are any questions, I'll pass them through. But you have an opportunity now to say maybe something you just were prepared to say. I don't want you to go with such resource away. Not for tonight. Please 
uh, this is your moment. Ah, okay. Um, what I want to also add is, I've also seen the power of associations and this membership uh, clubs or membership uh, activities, participating in something. Like now I'm a Rotarian. And it's you know in Rotary, we are taught about a service above self. And within that, the, you get to know uh, other people and what they're doing. And it also humbles you that indeed there's so much that you can always achieve if you get into it. So that is what I've also come to learn. So all of us, even the, what you had asked earlier, the young people, are you a member of something? If you're an, an institution, uh, a club somewhere at home, there are those uh, associations that we get into back in the village, those committees, the community matters. Those things really help because they also build someone. You get to know uh, perspectives and then travel. I think that's one other thing that uh, we really need to stress about. Traveling exposes someone. I learned a lot of what I'm doing courtesy of the travels I have done locally and internationally. So if you get an opportunity, explore this Kenya. Like now we need to be told, to, we at least look at all the 47 counties and ask yourself how many counties in Kenya have you reached? And what can you learn from them? Because once you sit with different people, it changes your mindset sometimes. There are things that you might think, hey, this is so stressful. But then when you go to another place, someone tells you, ah, and that is, uh, this is the easiest way to go around it. So travel really exposes someone. So if you get those opportunities to travel, travel as much. Read, that one I can never stress enough. Read as much as you can. Read, 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 read. And then have also your me time. Ladies, that one I'll pick to the ladies. At least men also have their me time. So they say they have their own. But I always encourage growth of both the men and the women or the girl and the boy child, because you need both. They're, the two of them are the drivers or the engines of an economy. So you need to raise the boy child because they'll be the husbands, fathers, uh, their brothers to this girl child that we're empowering. So we need to empower both so that we can grow this, uh, move this journey together. And then be innovative, be current. Uh, then yes, but I want to stress on the me time. It is um, very good to meditate, take off, take even an hour and just relax. Take an hour and do, take a hobby. You do your hobbies, by the way. If you love dancing, singing, music, going to church, going somewhere, traveling, playing an instrument, those are very key because they help. If you love exercising, you love walking, love uh, sun basking, please do it. I've noticed those are things that sometimes we ignore but they are very uh, helpful in our growth. So when you, on personal growth, those things that make you rejuvenate, if you love just going to shower and staying in water, if you love swimming, go. Don't shy off, you go and do it. If you want to study other things, I think those are the things that uh, I, I always advocate, always do something and be thankful, be thankful because we always look at what we don't have the negative side of it, <clears throat> but there's so much. You are where you are because one day in your life, you always wanted to be that one. So now you've reached there. Please say thank you that you are here. Then say, I can move to the next step. Be positive. You're given lemons, make a lemonade out of it. Get oranges, you want juice, make juice out of it don't tire those are the things that i just wanted to say and let's keep in touch yeah wow Martha, Martha, Martha. i mean uh <laughs> we we can't have enough of this really uh and and i be sure we have to to to, to call you again uh we we organize forums and i'm sure and i'm sure we are going to have you again believe me believe me i, I sat here okay. just listening and listening and listening and as I said, I have to replay this again, uh, not just for people, but for myself. I want to listen to this again and again. So I really want to thank you. Thank you for your time. I really apologize again for keeping you uh, for 15 minutes waiting. And I no, have I a schedule. I really, I know it, it has, it's a sacrifice. I really want to appreciate. But I let me just let you know that this is, is impacting on people's lives. I have seen uh, some comments 
uh, on 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 Facebook already. People are excited. I'm seeing comments on on, on Zoom. Excited, and I'm sure you have. Even if it's one life that uh, this inspires, good for me. I mean, it's it's it would, it would have achieved our purpose. Thank you so so much. Thank you. You. How do I say? How do I end this? I say you're so uh, inspiring. Is an understatement. <laughs> Uh, and, but uh, I thank you and I thank you for your humility. We just want to ask God to continue to lift you. Uh, you are deputy, your deputy today. Who knows? You're going to be the main thing in the future. Who knows? <laughs> we want to wish you all the best. And I know you continue to inspire. I say if you smile to the world, it will smile back to you. So I'm agreeing with you. I'm agreeing with you 100% on the things you have said. So thank you very much. We have done exactly one hour by now. And we appreciate and uh, we look forward to having you again. Uh, I just want to thank you once again from the bottom of my heart. I pray that may the Lord shine your path. May the Lord lift you. May the Lord just make you to be better and better every day of your life. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. And God bless you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Sakwa. I wish uh, everyone God's blessings. Happy holidays. And yes, one of the other things that inspires me, I'm a Christmas baby. So I think maybe it's just in my genes. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> so I wish everyone happy holidays, Merry Christmas to all who celebrate Merry Christmas. May the year 2022 come with its own uh, plate for all of us. May it be the new book or the op new chapter that you want to open in your life. And it, because it will come with a blank page, write what you want out of it and note down your goals and always stick and thank you to all and always remember you are you are you so do you and may god help you deliver on his purpose his mission in your life and uh, continue blessing others and to you sakwa may god also continue blessing you and continue reaching out to all of us who listen to your inspirational words that we can always grow. So let's grow together. Let's learn together. I'm available. And thank you once again for welcoming me. And it has been a lovely evening. I really appreciate it. With my culture, we say, Kongoi me sing. So Kongoi, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I've written a book. I'll make sure it gets to you. I've written a book. Oh, thank you. I'll make sure it gets to you as soon as possible. Thank you very thank much. You. And God bless you. Thank you and God bless you all. Goodbye. Good night.